Many different species of plants have actually evolved methods of consuming animals. And most of these plants are not actually related to each other, evolved this rather odd behaviour totally separately from each other. It leaves us with the questions of why do they do it? How do they do it? And how could this possibly have actually evolved in the first place? Well, plants can absorb essential chemicals from the environment around them, generally in three separate forms, either from the air, from the water, or from the soil around the plants. Fortunately, in some parts of the world, the local environment may be lacking in one or more of the chemicals the plants need to maximise its potential growth and development. Now, since all the plants in a local area are also likely to be suffering the same issues, it isn't going to be actually devastating for the plants. But any plant that somehow obtained a good supply of these missing chemicals would be at a distinct advantage of the, over the others in the local area. Now, different carnivorous plants can be seeking a totally different set of chemicals to assist the plant to grow and develop. However, four of the most common missing chemicals, or those present in fairly reduced amounts, are nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Now, animal bodies, especially insect bodies, are high in both nitrogen and potassium. They also have relatively small but significant amounts of phosphorus and magnesium present as well. And this means the plant can somehow get the nit nitrogen and other elements from the animal inside the plant can substantially benefit from the chemical boost that the body may provide. However, like all things, there's a trade-off here. If the plant spends too much of its resources in an attempt to capture the animal, the gains provided by the additional chemicals may be outweighed by the investment in the capture system. It's comparable to a plant growing in low light conditions, creating extra leaves to capture more available light. Additional resources used in creating the leaves must be returned substantially greater both of things of this, if it's made worthwhile for the plant and growth as a whole. So how are plants going to attempt to get the nutrients from an animal inside the plant? Well, many plants do actually indirectly benefit from the dead bodies of animals or just their defecations, either landing on the soil around them or more importantly, on the leaves. Also, many of the leaves of plants are often coated in hairs or sticky substances these can be used to protect the plant from water loss, cold, or predation. In some plants, these hairs can evolve into structures like prickles and even stinging like the stinging nettle. But initially, these developing carnivorous plants, having these hairs and sticky substances, could enable it to hold on to dead insect bodies falling from higher up in the canopy or just out of the sky. Then, over time, these structures can develop both trap more animals and also to more easily absorb the nutrients from the animal once it's actually trapped. And whilst the plants can sometimes trap other animals, insects are going to be the primary target for most of these traps. Traps have developed fall into some distinct categories. But since they've all evolved separately, there's a great variety within the types of trap, and sometimes some plants actually even combine some different types of traps. The most familiar type of trap, the one which is actually fairly unusual, is the snap trap. Plants like the Venus fly trap have trigger hairs on the leaves to signal the plant that an insect is within the trap. Then two leaves or halves of leaves quickly wrap around the creature to seal its doom. And more than one hair on the leaf needs to be triggered in fairly rapid succession to prevent an accidental triggering of the actual trap. Then there are pitfall traps where the leaves form a kind of funnel with a liquid at the bottom, often replenished with rainwater filled with bacteria which will digest the animals pouring all in. And slippery sides and downward pointing hairs can also be used to prevent an escape from that kind of trap. And there are flypaper traps, where sticky substances are on the specialised leaves, trap and hold the insect. The more captured insect struggles, the more sticky hairs and other substances come into contact with it, the more firmly it's actually trapped. There are bladder traps, which use a combination of a kind of hinge leaf structure and water movement to trap and seal the creature within a chamber. And finally, there are lobster traps, which have many similarities with the pitfall trap. Here, the insect is forced deeper and deeper within the structure, prevented from exiting by downward pointing spikes, which allow the creature to pass deeper into the structure, not kind of move back out. 
similar in form to a lobster pot, hence the actual name. And while some traps just rely upon stray creatures wandering past them, many actually take a more active role in drawing in potential victims. Plants can use different colours on the leaves to attract the attention of the animal, mimicking the colours on flowers, hinting at a source of nectar. Sometimes they actually can have a small amount of nectar to entice the animal to the source of a trap. They're using the smell of nectar to entice those insects into the trap. The use of smell of course leads us to another form. So while some insects are pollinators, others feed on dead bodies of other animals. There are a wide variety of carnivorous plants which produce smells resembling that of rotting material to attract their dupe into the trap. And many of these carnivorous plants are now so used to replenishing their vital supplies of nutrient from animal sources that even when they're placed in environments which have all the chemicals they need to grow and flourish, can lead the plants to withering and dying if they're not actually supplied with their normal animal diet. So as carnivorous plants, rather weird, rather unusual, specialised plants, also rather wonderful.